morning. It's 9 a.m. I've been awake for about an hour. Um, Good morning. I had to get up and go to the loo at 8 o'clock. And unfortunately, Daryl woke up because he had the leak flushing. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I just want Mum to go downstairs, but she's not doing it. Mummy's being lazy. I don't want to get up. Oh. He's so mean to me, everybody. Yeah, that's a really nice shot of my tattoo. Dang on! Love my tattoo. It's probably my favourite one. Next, no, I think that and my hand are my two favourite tattoos. Mm. Right, well, it's a gorgeous day outside and I've got a load of laundry in the machine that needs to go out. Yep. Um, we need to go down the road a bit later on. And also, Mum must be poked. Mm, apparently I need to be poked, yeah. We need to go down the road later on because there's a man coming down to give us a quote. So we'll have a little walk, I think. Um, pop to my mum's. Um, hello. Hi. <laughs> Just go downstairs. No. So, um, oh. I love when he's all kissy. Yes, sir. <laughs> Do you want to go down that dog out for me? Go on, I'll be down set. So I've got to try and remember how to use a menstrual cup with these because it seems like my April cycle started at midnight. And also, so that's fun. <laughs> and guess what also is today? Snooker! Yeah, the Snooker World Championship starts in like an hour. Mm. Which is cool. I am just staying here. So, yeah, I'm going to get up and sort all that and have a and, cup of tea. And go downstairs. Might even have tea out the garden if it's warm enough. It's, uh, I don't know what it is. Oh, hang on. Let's have a quick look. Uh, it's only seven degrees out there at the minute, so it's a bit cold. It yeah, it's a little bit cold out there today, so <laughs> I'll put the laundry out. Um, once I've had the tea, um, because it is such a nice sort of sunny day, and my garden's a sun trap. So although it's only seven degrees, it probably feels quite a couple of degrees warmer than that in my garden, because it's it Take faces south, like true south. It's about one degree off. So, I'm talking, I'm talking, thank you. Um, and it's it doesn't seem to get as a breeze, you know. You can go and stand out in the back garden and go, Wow, it's boiling and all that lot. And then you go out the front and it's like, Actually, it's fucking freezing because there's a, there's a breeze. So, yeah, Ooh. slept well, Daryl slept well, he cocked out about quarter to nine, nine o'clock last night, which is a bit earlier for him. And then slept till eight, so yeah, he's a look at him, cheeky sod. Pretty cheeky. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Playing. Playing what? Pillow must die. Oh, okay. <laughs> really? The pillow just attacked me. And killed me. I did. Uh, I don't think it did. I think you just dropped it. Oh. Uh. So, um, my watch has just said, well done. You've reached your stand goal. Apparently, I've, I've done the standing eight times since midnight. No, I've, I've been asleep. Yeah, um, that's weird. <laughs> Says there's only two hours where I didn't get it. Oh yeah. right, well, no, that's that's not right. Sorry, could you repeat what you said? Cancel. 
Ooh. There's nothing to cancel. Oh, go away. Uh, yes, it's like uh, very insistent. I've, I've, I've stood. Oh, I can't bring it up now. Yeah. Right. Uh, no, I've been sleeping. Trust me. So I put a thing up on my vlog, uh, on my vlog on my Instagram last night. It was an "Ask Me Anything" post so that I could have ideas Hi. for for this for this vlog, and. Um, I've made friends with this girl that lives in the States, she's another dreadhead. And um, she she asked, a, it's quite a loaded question, really. Uh, because she said, is it much better there than in America? Well, I suppose that depends on what you mean, really. Um, I can put a film on. Go on then, you can put a film on. Is it better here than in America? In some ways, yes. Our healthcare is better, I think. Um, you know, you, you every, everybody in England is entitled to free healthcare. Um, it's paid for through wages and taxes and things like that. Um, and everybody has to contribute to that when, when they go to work. Uh, it's called national insurance contributions. So that's better. I mean, I've heard of, like Americans coming over here on holiday um, and then having to visit the emergency room and then asking, well, how much do I pay? And, and the staff going, well, nothing, it's free. Uh, and then being genuinely sort of astonished by this. So that, I think, is better. Um, you, It is considered wrong to carry a gun here. It's not commonplace. Um, you know, I mean, my, my son has two rifles, but he shoots at a... Uh, a range you know people don't go out walk you know walking through the woods with guns here um it's illegal to carry a handgun it's considered unusual for be anybody to have a permit for one um uh, where i live especially even even the police don't carry guns as a matter of course do you know what i mean um we do have a higher knife crime i suspect maybe because of that but i'm you know, I'd rather face a knife than I would a gun. Um, I have faced a knife. <laughs> um, you know, so there is that side of the thing. Um, our children have to wear uniform in schools, which they don't in the States. Um, for example, Daryl's uniform consists of a red polo shirt, grey school trousers, black shoes, black socks and a red school jumper. Um, secondary school they wear a tie while well, the boys wear ties um, you know each school usually has their own colour and their own logo some schools require the logo to be on absolutely everything which makes the cost of uniform quite high um, the school Daryl's that only requires it on the on the school sweater just a, a small logo sort of you know it's literally about that big and um, that can make things a bit more expensive uh, what else your stationery stores are much, much better than ours. Much better. I mean, we have probably, like, we have Hobbycraft, the works, the range. And that's really about it. Chain stores, I'm talking. You know, you guys, I mean, you have, like, videos I've seen, it seems like sometimes half of Walmart is dedicated to stationery. Yeah, I would love to go to the States on a stationary holiday <laughs> and buy so much crap. I would love to to just, yeah, I would love to spend the amount of money you guys do on stationary. Tax. Our tax is, is calculated. The price you see is the price you pay when you go to stores here. So you go to stores and a chocolate bar will be 97 pence. It's pence and pounds here, not cents and dollars. So it's 97 pence and that is what you pay when you get to the checkout. There is no adding 20% or anything. The price you see is the price you pay on everything. Everything here in England. You, there, is never a, a, there is never a situation in store where you will see a price and then they would then add the tax on top. That just doesn't happen. Um, what else? 
I don't know, I'm gonna have to think about this. There's probably loads of things. I think, yes, it's it's safer here, I personally think, but then I live in a, in a very, um, I live on a tiny, tiny island at the bottom of the UK, for those that don't know, it's called the Isle of Wight. Um, not to be confused with the one in Virginia, US, yeah? Uh, it is literally at the bottom of the UK map, and unless you are looking at a UK map, you are not gonna see it, because it is tiny, tiny, tiny. It's like 26 miles long and 17 miles high. It is tiny. And um, it's, it's very um, vintage where I live. It's, it's considered a very safe place to bring up children. Um, or it used to be. We seem to be having quite a lot of issue with um, child offences at the moment, child sex offences, which, you know, that seems to be on the rise everywhere. But yeah, where I live is is quite sort of secluded from like the rest of England in a way. Um, so the the life in a big city is very, very different than it is where I live. I, I, I'm a country burnt, Kim. So, you know, it's, uh, yeah. I've never lived in a city. Never lived in a big city. Never. Don't want to. It smells. Um, England, England versus the US. I mean, yeah, I like the US. It's It's big, but it's big, you know. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of things you guys do. You, you drive on the wrong side of the road as well, you know, just say, just say it. You drive on the wrong side of the road. Um, what else? I don't know. This is probably something I'm going to have to repeatedly come back to, you know, England versus the US, which is better. I don't know that either is better. I mean, you guys have things over there that we don't have and we have things over here that you don't have, which makes it better. I think I I would prefer to live here than over there. You know, you guys need medical insurance for everything. I mean, I, I have a child who required open heart surgery when he was 10. And that costs a lot of money. Well, I haven't had to pay anything for that because it's on the NHS. You know, um, I would be terrified of, of if my child was ill and required healthcare of turning up at a &E and having to produce insurance or a credit card, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. Homelessness isn't as much of an issue here in the US, the UK as it is in the US. You guys seem to have a lot in the way of homelessness. Um, I know it's different in the cities before anybody sort of jumps on me and go, yeah, it's big. Um, I'm aware of that, but it is not as big as it is in the States, you know. Um, it also does seem to be, and I'm talking as in people sleeping on the streets type homeless. Um, I've never seen an old lady pushing a shopping cart full of tin cans. Um, but then again, I, again that, I suppose that kind of thing probably happens more in the city. I know there are homeless people where I live. Um, but I've only ever here seen a couple of people sleeping rough. I don't know where they go. Um, there are a couple of shelters, I think, but I know there are a couple of people that, you know, don't use them. We have a very tight knit community where I live. So it's, you know, everybody knows everybody else. What well, you would do when you live in a sort of 26 mile long island, <laughs> you know, um, we also have our own microclimate where I live, so it will be very, very warm here on the island. But then when we go over to the mainland, which you can only reach by boat, you cannot, there is no causeway, there's no bridge, it is boat only, and that's it. Um, it takes an hour on the car ferry and half an hour on the passenger ferry. And you, you could be really warm here and then take a half hour passenger ferry journey or an even 10 minute hovercraft journey and it will be cold on the mainland. It's strange very very strange but generally i don't i don't know it's uh i think i would prefer to live here than i would there i love the states but yeah uh, oh 
result, our, our cars require an MOT test, which means it has to be tested in a garage, has to go through a series of tests to be allowed to drive on the road, to be road legal. Um, it's called an MOT. Um, you are also required by law to have tax and insurance on your car. And the tax you pay is supposed to go towards maintaining the roads. So, yeah, but the roads in England are dire. Your roads are nicer. Your roads are nicer. Your roads are lovely. I've driven on the roads in Florida and they were lovely. Admittedly, it was probably more um, touristy than residential. Um, when I went to Florida, we stayed... I'm pouring a drink before you wonder what I'm doing. Um, we stayed on Clear Creek Circle and it was lovely that here there are a lot of potholes. England is well known for its potholes. I'm just trying to think of what else. I need some Americans to tell me some, some, ask me, you know, do you have this? Do you have that? You know, uh, you have longer summer breaks than we do for school. Um, our kids break up at the end of July and then they go back the first week of September. Then they get about 10 days off over Christmas. They usually break up like Christmas week sometimes. You know, if Christmas falls on a Friday, they might sort of do school on like Monday and Tuesday. Um, I have known that to happen. And then they go back usually the first week of January they get a week off in the middle of spring term then they get a couple of weeks off at easter they get a week off at the end of may and then six weeks of summer and they get a week off in the middle of the autumn term so i think you guys have longer off school than we do i'm not sure um If you have a baby in the UK, everybody, no matter what your earnings are required, are um, entitled to child benefit, which is a payment from the government every week. It's about 20 something pounds per week per child, um, for your eldest child. And then it's slightly reduced for each additional children. They have capped it now. So if you have more than a certain amount of children, you don't get it. But um, yeah, your, el your eldest child is about 21 pound a week, I think it is. And uh, everybody is entitled to it. It doesn't matter whether you are poor and living on state benefits or whether you have the highest paid job in the UK, you're still entitled to it. Um, which, you know, if you are poor and on state benefits, that extra 20 something pound a week is quite important. Um, yeah, I shall have to revisit this one a little bit later, I think. So I fully charged my watch before I fell asleep last night. I've got this crossword up on my phone that I quite like to do before I fall asleep. And I chucked my watch on charge. So 50%. And like, you know, a couple of crosswords later, it was done. So yeah, I went to sleep with it fully charged. It is now, what's that, 10 to 11, is that? Yeah, 10 to 11. And my watch is on 85%. So I don't think I'm going to top it up this morning. I'm going to see how it goes. It probably only get light use today. I'm in my bedroom, which means I have to lie in my bed under my blanket. Um, yeah, so I'm going to see um, how it goes today. It probably won't get majorly heavy, heavy use as I'm sort of more used to it now. Um, it really sort of depends on how I go about using it from now on. Um, I changed the colour back to the default colour on this watch face because I discovered that when I changed it from the default colour, the earth, I've got the earth, I'll show you. So I've got the earth and the moon and the solar system on my watch. When I change those from default colour, they go black and white instead of in colour, which I was a bit like, oh, I'm a bit bummed about that, that they don't keep their colour when you change the dial and the the name of the week. So yeah, I do love the little battery thing in the corner. That is that 
um, battery thing I was telling you about yesterday that shows me both my phone and my watch. So I don't have to get my phone out of my pocket. That's the in the top right. Um, my next appointment on, on the dial itself. Uh, bottom left is messages and bottom right is my uh, rings. I'm still not sure about those. They, they don't seem to be anywhere near as um, reliable as Fitbit. You know, um, I can't get steps to show up unless I open the health app on my phone, it seems. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, it seems. I would like to change the, the red ring to like my steps. That would be cool if you it would be cool if you could adjust your rings for different things, you know, instead of it showing like how much how many calories I've burned or whatever the fuck it is, it would be cool if I could change it to show me how many steps I've done. I suppose there's probably an app out there that would put the steps in a complication. But I haven't found it yet. And the steps on my watch and the steps on my Fitbit, there seems to be about a good three, four hundred step discrepancy. For example, yesterday my Fitbit said I did 11,140 steps, but my Apple Watch says I did 12,357, I think it was. Which, you know, is cool because it means my Apple Watch thinks I've done more. Um, if I'm standing on the spot, if I'm stepping on the spot, my Fitbit does not pick up unless it's in my hand. It doesn't pick up when it's tucked into my pocket or into my boobs um, or anything like that. I don't know whether it would pick up more if it was on my ankle so it only seems to pick up if it's in my hand and I'm actually swinging it when I'm stepping on the spot. Um, I don't know about the Apple Watch, whether that picks up better. I mean, I've I've stepped while watching my Fitbit tracker and it seems to be pretty, you know, good on that side of things. So I'm not sure whether I'm going to stay with Fitbit purely for the tracking of steps. Or whether I will eventually move over to Apple for that. That was the one reason that was the one reason I switched from Apple in the first place was the well, of course back then I had the Apple Watch the first Apple Watch and there wasn't a hell of a lot you could do on it really. And I wasn't impressed with the amount of charging I had to do on it. Sometimes I had to charge the damn thing twice a day. Um you, you know, so yeah, I decided to switch to Fitbit because I tested the Apple Watch. I walked into town and I mapped the route on Google and Apple and on several other different um, apps. And they all told me that the point from my house to somewhere else was a mile. Now, I checked at my front door and then I checked again when I got to the one mile point and the Apple Watch... I think was a was was it like it said I'd done like 0.6 something of a mile and I was like yeah no fuck that do you know what I mean <laughs> because it's got GPS and all that lot now hasn't it so that might be better I'm pretty sure mine's got GPS anyway um yeah it has it's cell cellular that mine doesn't have so you know that that might be better I don't know whether the first one had GPS so that that might be again that's something i think i'm gonna have to have a play with check the mile walk it and then see what i've got see whether it's closer in distance than than the um the fitbit I suppose it's a question of getting used to something new, isn't it? I've gotten used to how Fitbit works. I've been using Fitbit for, what? Four years, I think, now. Maybe even longer than that. Yeah, it's longer than that. I was doing it when Daryl was, like, just starting to walk. That's when I switched over to Fitbit. And he's six and a half now. So, yeah, 
getting on for like six years, five and a half, six years. So I've been with Fitbit quite a long time. I'm not ditching the Fitbit yet. You know, I I do plan to stick because I'm, you know, I've actually still got a payment left to make on the Versa 3. Um, I just find that as a smartwatch, it's not as reliable. Um, I love all the functions that this thing does. Um, I love the race to talk to Siri. I think that's brilliant. Um, I keep forgetting to try the um, cover it to mute it thing. I'll have to try that at some point. <laughs> um, I'm not 100% getting notifications when like there's a comment on Facebook or something like that on it. Um, I'd, I'll actually feel the, the notification on my boob and then I'll go like that and the notification will pop up on my watch, but I, I didn't hear a noise or feel the haptic feedback. So, mm. you know, also the, um, hourly chime thing seems a bit temperamental. I either don't feel it, hear it, or it's not happening all the time. I did last night. I felt it after I checked a couple of times. So, you know. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure on that one. I like all the functionality of the watch over Fitbit. Hmm. I've put my apps in list view. I can't, I don't know how people work with that grid view. How, how do you remember what all the icons are? <laughs> I'm constantly tapping things to open it to find out what they are. Whereas at least if I put it in list view, I know it's alphabetical. So if I want to look at Instagram, I've got to scroll to I. If I want to look at the weather, I've got to scroll down to W. Do you know what I mean? I I prefer that. That's easier for my brain than trying to remember, you know, potentially fucking hundreds of apps. I mean, some, some of the um, things I've seen online, these people have... A shit ton of apps absolute shit ton of apps so yeah the list view is easier for me than the grid view um and not only that not only have you got to learn the app icon you've also got to learn where they are on that grid thing unless you organize it i wouldn't have the first idea how to go about grouping apps together and then you know when you get another app you've got to then like move that into place every single time at least with the list view, it's just automatically ordered, which just suits my brain so much better. So I'm waiting for like 11 o'clock to come so that I can find out if this thing ticks. I've got about another 30 odd seconds on it. So yeah, at the moment, I've taken the straps off of um, my Fitbit and it lives in my bra. Unless I'm stepping on the spot, in which case it's held in my hand. So, I'm just curious to see where this makes a... See, now I've had a YouTube thing come up, but I did not get any haptic feedback or any noise on that. Also oh, got no noise at the eleven o'clock. That's annoying. I don't know why that isn't working. That's the chimes every hour, just to let you know that it's the hour. I don't know why that isn't working. It's not working all the time, I know that much. Unless it only does it when both phone and watch are like not in active use. But I definitely didn't chime at the at, at, at the hour. So I like this. You could get a thingy from go away. YouTube, comment on YouTube. And I can heart it immediately. That's going to make life a bit more awesome. Um, Thanks. Glad to help. <laughs> she woke up when I moved. <laughs> I 
I mean, I've seen some um, videos where I'm going to prop you up on the, on the stand because that make life a little bit easier. Where um, people have had something up on the screen and they've covered it like that and it's gone back to, to, this has just vibrated at me and I've got no idea what I, oh, apparently I woke the weather up. So, how does that work? Because I've seen thing on YouTube where some people just seem to cover their screen up and it goes back to to normal. I've got mine set so that when I my wrist goes like that, it goes back to the watch face. So yeah, see now my watch is down twenty three percent. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna test it today to see how it how it copes. But yeah, right. Time to get dressed. So I assume Daryl's gonna want a hug in the bed. Daryl, it's time to get dressed. Cause it's time to get dressed. Why? In a bit. I wonder if you'll want a hug in the bed. Hug in the bed. Hug in the bed. Hmm. Where have you I'm already in the bed waiting for my hug in the bed. I did not know you were that. <sighs> Bye. Come on then, get in. <laughs> Sorry I took so long. You took so long, didn't you? Sorry. Yeah, right. So yeah, I'll see you a bit later on. Well, no. Yeah, because we're going to have hug in the bed. Oh, everybody watching our hug in the bed. I think they should. Oh, should they? Okay. Oh, hug in the bed. But we should do crossword. We're going to do a crossword, are we? Yeah. Okay. Wait. I don't know why he likes me doing crossword so much. Usually because it means he can play on my bed while I'm uh, doing a crossword, doesn't it? Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll see you a bit later. Just poop scooped out in my back garden. That's something different. You guys call it a yard, we call it a garden. And also usually laid down to lawn with flowers and stuff like that. You guys seem to have like mostly concrete yards. Oh, that's weird. But yes, I've just gone out and poop scooped my garden. What I'd like to know is how can something this small cause so much shit? I mean, yeah, it's been a while since I've done weather, but and when she when she goes it's like it's not like a li delicate little poop it is you know doberman sized doberman poo she's secretly a doberman so then i've now linked my apple and the fitbit accounts together through strava so apparently now my fitbit can write to my apple but it only seems to do distance not steps so I don't know whether anybody else has figured out a workaround to get the, the Fitbit steps on Hello. the Apple instead. So I'd love to be able to get a, like a jewel strap, could you imagine? So I could have my um, Apple Watch there and then my Fitbit there, under there. I mean, I would just slide it, but it would, you know, it would um, fall out. Sure I'm talking. Could you them. shut up for five seconds? Go on, off you go. Point. Shoot. I'm showing you my Yeah, and I'm talking. Oi, that step doesn't belong there, does it? I'll fall over that. You leave that there. Um, because I use step there. Obviously, it's my steps that I need to record. So you know, come on, because you shouldn't be out here. I'm cooking. Go on, shoot. And not the miles. I mean, if I could. Yeah, a 
jewel strap would be awesome. I could do one if I knitted it. I think. I don't feel quite so confident after trying to sew one and failing miserably. But then I know a lot more about knitting than I do about sewing. I just don't want to do it and then it to fail miserably, you know what I mean? And they have to be it would have to be done in a way that the sensors fit on on the skin. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's very much it. Um, the royal funeral was today for the Duke of Edinburgh, the Queen's husband. It was really sad. It was really sad. They televised the funeral. I watched it with my mum and uh, and Kyle, and it was really really sad because they all had to sit apart in the chapel, and because they're all from different households, they were all sitting in their own little bubbles. And the queen was sat on her own. You know, she's just lost her husband of seventy something years, and because of fucking COVID, she had to sit on her own. And you just think, well, surely. You know, they could have let one of her children sit with her. Because it's not like they're not all going back together, is it? I mean, come on. You know, they, they're they going to want to spend the, at least the rest of the day together because they've just lost their father and their grandfather and all that lot. I mean, I know some of them have got young babies that they need to rush home to, but, I mean, you're not telling me that Charles and Camilla and Andrew aren't going to be with their mum today. Of course they are. You know, it wouldn't too surprise me if William and, and Catherine run back to be with her as well. But it was sad. She was sat there on her own. And I really felt for her. I really did. I cried. I felt so sorry for her. Nobody should have to sit on their own when they're saying goodbye to their soulmate. You know, this is somebody that she's been with all this time. And you just think that just fucking sucks. Big style. So, yeah, felt really sorry for her. Anyway, my dinner is almost ready. I'm having salmon and broccoli risotto. Don't be impressed, it's out of the packet. And I'm going to have a few drinks, you know. I've decided this one's here. And I've got nothing on tomorrow, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, it is now uh, nearly 20 past nine. Um, I'm pretty tired again. Uh, I've done like about two rounds on Pikachu and Daryl's conked out. So I kicked Kyle out and I'm going to go to bed. Um, I was going to have a later day tomorrow, but we've decided that we're going to get out the back and level out the driveway, which I showed you guys the other day where it's a little bit lumpy and bumpy because it's not been leveled out properly. And I know what I want to do out there, but I need more than just me. So Carl said he would come and help me. And um, yeah, we're going to get out there and at least make a start. So I can pull the car out and put it parallel to the lane for tomorrow while we we sort of level it out as much as we can between us. And we'll, we'll sort of go from there. Um, and hey, that will, you know, that will keep us uh, occupied for the day. So yeah. So I'm going to sign this vlog off here. I'm quickly going to do today in my boo journal and then um, I'm going to go to bed. I'm really tired. I wish I wasn't tired all the fucking time. I know the doctor is going to contact me soon um, regarding the... Um, Mm, he's actually not going to contact me for another month. He's going to contact me um, 
soon to discuss my um, irregular periods because I skipped uh, January and March and had one in February and I'm having one now so so I think when he does finally get in touch with me I'm going to say to him you know I, I feel knackered all the time I don't feel refreshed when I get up I wake up and I just I'm tired and I could quite cheerfully I'd like to go back to sleep I can't sleep because by that point my body aches um yeah and just I don't know, just go from there I suppose I mean I'm taking vitamin D I'm taking the biotin now and I take the antihistamine to try and stop my body aching all the time and I am exhausted all the fucking time and this is stupid you know it's getting to the point where I get up and I don't want to do anything because I'm so tired I get up and reaching 10,000 steps is really hard, you know? Um, it's, it's just insane. I mean, what are we on now? Let's have a look. On, yeah, I've done around about 11,200 steps, depending on which tracker you look at. Um, so, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm tired. I am really, 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 really tired. <sighs> and I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be. I'm doing 6,000 steps less than I used to do. And when I sit down in the evening, my legs are twitching. They are so restless. I'm tired. I just... You know, it's insane. It's really, really insane, and I don't like it. I'm pissed off with it. Right, I'm gonna go to bed. Um, another thing you guys have in America that we don't, you when you want to send a post, you stick it in your little post box thing and put your flag up, don't you? We don't. We have to go to a on street post box. Um, we have to go and buy our stamps. You can buy them from most shops, but yeah, um, we have to go and buy our stamps and then we put it in a designated post box. The rounds people will not pick up post as well as deliver. They only deliver. Um, if you want to send anything heavier than what will fit through a letterbox, which is the same size as on a post box, you have to go to the post office, in which point it is weighed um, and size is gauged to dependent on what class it goes at and then yeah everything we send out of England now has to have a customs form on it for um because of Brexit basically so uh yeah <laughs> that's something else that's different so I don't know uh, do you think it sounds better being in the US or being in the UK you have a lot of things over there that I wish I had but then is it just a question of the grass is always greener I would not like to be in debt for having five children, you know, um, the, the, the whole medical thing. I'm very, very glad I live in England because of that, because, you know, I suffer from chronic pain. I'm hypermobile. My mum has COPD. My son has a heart condition. Callie had neonatal epilepsy. Um, a couple of my kids have needed therapy and then of course I was an older mum so I was monitored a little bit more when I had Daryl that all costs a lot of money <laughs> in the states and I'm glad that I I've not had to pay for that that it's coming out of national insurance contributions so you know that that is probably the biggest thing that makes the UK better than the US I mean yes our NHS is dire sometimes you know if you need mental health for example if you are struggling mentally and you need somebody to talk to you could be looking at six months before you after being referred by your GP and you have to go via the GP to get self-referral and yes you self-refer but you have to see your GP first you know and then it takes up to six months dependent on where you live as well you know um 
So yeah, it's 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 bad on that sense. Of course, at the moment, due to COVID, they put a lot of um, not serious operations. They pushed them back, so now the waiting list is, you know, longer and longer. And I mean, they consider them as you know not vital, but the people who are waiting replacement knees and things like that do consider them vital because it's affecting way of life people have died uh, of cancer because they weren't seen quick enough when covid first broke out so you know that that that's another thing um quite a few people have committed suicide here in england because they couldn't cope with lockdown with not seeing families with everything else so you know, it's 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 different. It seems perfectly normal to us, though, doesn't it? You know, I mean, it's like it seems perfectly normal to you guys that you have to pay insurance. Um, I know of a man out in America, um, and he's a doctor, and he has to pay fifteen hundred dollars, upwards of fifteen hundred dollars, for um, epilepsy, epilepsy and diabetes medicine. That's medicine that keeps him alive. The thought, and that's per prescription, by the way. So he pay. I think he pays something. Is it like sixteen hundred dollars for his diabetes medication? And I think it's getting off for about two grand for his epilepsy medication. He's paying well over three thousand dollars for medication that he needs. He needs that medication to stay alive. That, to an English person, is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Oh, another thing that you guys do that we don't... You circumcise your boys for aesthetics. I'm not going to get into an argument about this. I do not require an argument in my comment section about this. Okay? It is considered quite normal. I think it's becoming less so for your baby boys to be circumcised for, uh, after birth. We don't do that. We do not do that. It is unusual for men to be circumcised here in England. We circumcise for medical necessity, not for aesthetics. Um, one of my boys have been circumcised and he was circumcised as a young adult. He was just 17, 18. Um, and that was for medical need. That was a medical necessity. He had to have it done. Um, I have only ever been with one cut bloke and you know which do I prefer mm, I can't really say either way to be perfectly honest didn't feel that different to me but there you go um yeah so yeah we don't do that <laughs> um let's see what else uh the only issue with having NHS is it means that we have less say in what happens like um and i of course i'm glad now that they said no but after i had alex who is now 25 i asked to be sterilized but because i was only 20 years old um i was 21 four months after alex was born they said no and i asked repeatedly for years and they kept saying no and I, in the end, I sat my GP down and I said, why not? I said, you won't even refer me to gynecology to ask. And he said, there's no point because they will just tell you no. And I said, why not? He said, because you're too young. There is nothing medically wrong with you. There's no medical reason for us to sterilise you. And I was like, but I've got four children and I'm a single mum and I suffer from chronic pain. Nope, not doing it. Won't happen. Well, can I get it done privately? I.e. pay for it. And he said, of course you can. He said, they're cut for perfectly good arms. You wouldn't pay for it. But to get sterilised here in the UK is a lot of money. And I didn't have it. So it didn't happen. Because I'm glad now. Because I've got Daryl. And boy, I love that kid to bits. But yeah. So we have less say in that kind of thing. Unless you're willing to pay. And as my GP said, if you're willing to pay, they'll do anything. So yeah, I hope that answers that question. Maybe, maybe not. Um, still loving me Apple Watch. Still loving it loads. Um, I have 47% left on it. It has not been on charge today. I've used it to send a couple of messages. Um, but I really, I, I, I've spent the day watching Prince Philip's funeral. 
and then TV with my eldest and my youngest. So, yeah, it's not been in use a lot. Um, but then I don't think I am going to be a heavy user unless I find apps that I absolutely love. Um, I like the being able to text on it, but... To be honest, the whole drawing each letter is more time consuming than it would be to pull my phone out of my purse and text. I think the only time I would perhaps do that is um, if I'm trying to be discreet. So like I could maybe do it under the table um, if I was somewhere where I was frightened I was going to get mugged which again doesn't really happen where I live um then perhaps I would not get my phone out because you know a, a, an iPhone 12 big jobby is noticeable so then I'm I may not do it um oh I've just had a tips learn how to use apps on the Apple watch I bet you I already know everything you want to tell me. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos. Um, so that might be the only time I would use that. Um, I've used it a few times to set up reminders or ask questions of Siri. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm going to leave that there. Um, hey, ask me anything. Okay. This is an ask me anything. We're doing ask me anything. Have you got a question that you think, yeah, and it doesn't have to be related to what you've seen or heard or anything like that. It can be totally fucking random. Ask me what you've got to lose. I can only refuse to answer it. But I might answer it. And that could be shocking. Thank you for joining me today. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. I would really, 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 really appreciate it. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, feedback, ask me anything down below. That would be awesome too. Or you could just say hi. Tell me a little bit about yourselves. Give me fodder for something to talk to you guys about. I realise that some videos I put out are 20 to 30 minutes long and then I ramble in others and they go on for a good hour. Um, I don't know. Do you do you mind? Do, is there like, a, do, do you get a bit bored after 20 minutes? Um, do you mind when I just sit here and talk to you? Or would you rather I was doing things as well? Let me know. Um, mm, Pikachu. Um, he is, his body is now about yay it's in the other room i'm not gonna go get it his body is now about yay tall um i think he's gonna go to sort of about here um starting to come in now for the neck and then i've just got to sew the head on and yeah and the ears and all that lot so i'm i'm nearly there but i find crocheting really hard on my hands especially when it's got to be nice and tight for toys so yeah uh if you click the watermark down in that corner you will be subscribed and if you hit the bell then appears down below you'll be notified when i upload new content Thank you so much for joining me today. I really, really appreciate it. Have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Take it easy, guys. Bye.